Hello peeps, welcome back to Big Deck Player with me, Matt Sparks. Today, we are taking a look at a mage deck. We haven't looked at a mage deck for quite some time, so I figured, let's have a look for one. I've managed to find one. As usual, I found it on hearthpone.com. I find it that Hearthpone is uh, slightly better for finding decks, and I like the layout and everything a bit more than some of the other uh, websites around. So that's why I usually look on that site. Uh, this is called the Secret Tempo Deck. Um, well, in fact, it's called, on Halfpone, it's called Rule the Ladder Mage Secret Tempo Deck Legend. But obviously that doesn't all fit uh, in that little space that we have up the top there. So let's have a look at the deck and see what's inside, shall we? Okay, now, first off, I've already made a change. In the original deck, uh, there are two Mana Worms. Um... And, uh, yeah, I, I took them out because I was lacking, or I felt like I was lacking some card draw. Um, so I replaced the, uh, the two Mana Worms. Uh, I've replaced it, one, with a Loot Hoarder, and I've also put in an Iron Beak Owl for a, a Silence. Just because Silence is almost 100% necessary. There is only one Silence in this deck, and that is the Iron Beak Owl. Um, but... Almost every deck nowadays has a silence in. Just because almost everyone is running something like a, a sludge belcher. Instead of a loot hoarder, I, because there's some secrets and stuff in this deck, I guess you could put in um, a duplicate instead, which could be quite useful. Um, but that's up to you. So let's have a look at what, what else is in the deck. Uh, we have two Undertakers, good uh, one cost drop. Synergizes well with some of the other cards in this deck. Two Frostbolts, because it's a mage deck, and what would a mage deck be without Frostbolts? Great two cost card. One Blood Mage Thalnos. Um, if you don't have a Blood Mage Thalnos, then uh, you could switch that out for either a Kobold Geomancer, if you want the spell damage, or you could put maybe. Uh, a novice engineer um, for the card draw because um, I've already put two loot hoarders in so you wouldn't really want to switch it for a loot hoarder um, unless you want to put a loot hoarder in and then put the um, the duplicate in that's a possibility uh, as I mentioned earlier we've got an RMB cal for the silence uh, I wanted to get a silence in and this was the cheapest one uh, two loot hoarders as I mentioned before um, the original deck only has one but I felt like um, a Loot Hoarder would be good because it's got Death Rattle, which synergizes well with The Undertaker, uh, and it gives us an extra card, which can be pretty useful. We have two Mad Scientists. Again, Death Rattle to uh, synergize with The Undertakers, um, and obviously it puts a secret on the battlefield. Now, it can be a bit random, um, and sometimes you'll get one type of secret when you could have done with a different one. There are only four secrets in this deck um, so by putting a duplicate in could be beneficial but you might not want to use duplicate with a mad scientist that's the only downside because if you get if your mad scientist dies and you get duplicate then you may end up duplicating something that you don't really want duplicated I think it would be more beneficial to use duplicate slightly later in the game for five, six, seven, eight cost creatures rather than getting more Undertakers out, especially late game. Most of your Death Rattle minions are in the, the sort of first half of this deck, so late game, Undertakers aren't going to be that effective. Alright, so we've got uh, so we've got two counter spells, really useful. We've got two mirror entities, again, really useful. Can change the tide of the game. Mad Scientist is great because it synergizes well with the Undertaker, but you don't necessarily get the ones that you want. You might find that you want to keep your mirror entities for later in the game, for when your opponent's putting out big creatures, so you can get a big creature for yourself. Um, but um, it can also be a nice way to build momentum at the beginning of the game. So I prefer having mirror entity sort of mid to late game and use my counter spells at the beginning, although counter spelling mind control uh, yesterday was glorious, so 
<laughs> yeah, so again, this is the this is the problem with Mad Scientist that I have is that although it's great because it synergizes well with the Undertaker, you don't necessarily get the exact one that you want. Two Kirin Tor Mage, which again is for secrets. This is probably a better use of putting secrets out. Obviously, you've only got uh, you've got two of these and two mad scientists. So technically, all of your secrets could be free and then could cost you nothing, which is fantastic. Um, but we all know that card draw doesn't necessarily work like that. And sometimes you won't get your Kirin Tor Mages until after you've already used all of your spells, uh, all of your secrets. So, yeah. I mean, the, the Mana Worms that were in this deck were in here because you're using secrets. Um, there's not a huge amount of spells other than the secrets, so... Um, but I find that uh, there's not enough low-cost spells, and that's why I took the Mana Worms out. Because there's only Frost Bolts and, and your, your secrets. But you're not going to be spamming secrets uh, early game. It's just not possible. I mean, if you had... Uh, if you had mirror image and arcane missiles, Hello. stuff like that, then it might be worth putting them in, but you don't, so that's why I took them out. We've got two fireballs because it's a mage deck and you need fireballs in a mage deck. Uh, there's only one polymorph. This was another reason I put the silence in because I don't have another polymorph um, and it's just that little bit of extra control over what your opponent is playing. And because there's only one, sometimes it could be a long time before you actually get it um, through your card draw. If you don't get it early on and your opponent plays something like a mountain giant then you might be a little bit screwed. So yeah, there is only one so bear that in mind. Uh, we have two water elementals. Um, these are great especially against heroes that use weapons. I, I generally will use this to keep them frozen if I can and then use uh, other minions or spells for uh, board control and keep this purely going for face so that, that they can't use their weapons to attack which is pretty awesome uh, two azure drakes for a bit of card draw and some extra spell damage and obviously because they've got the magic four attack these are particularly good against priests lotheb is a pretty awesome card i think virtually every deck i think is running lotheb just because that of that battle cry enemy spells cost five more the next turn we've got two sludge belchers uh, because Sludge Belchers are awesome. Um, this is, if I was going to run a duplicate, I think I'd probably run it around the same time that I'm playing a Sludge Belcher. Because they're a real pain in the bum to get rid of if you don't have a Silence or a Black Knight. And uh, so having more of these can only be a good thing. So if you were going to run a duplicate, I think I'd try and keep hold of the duplicate for when you start putting this stuff out. Or, or even Lotheb, for that matter. Can you imagine putting a Lotheb out and then them finally managing to kill it um, and then you put another one out and it means that they can't put, they can't play any more spells. Could be particularly effective against um, priests uh, and maybe even mages as well. Uh, we've got a Cairn Bloodhoof. Uh, again, another one that would, could be good for a duplicate if you decide to put it in the deck. Um, it's a fairly strong card anyway. It trades really, really well. We have a Black Knight for some Taunt Removal, especially good against uh, Ironbark Protectors on Druids, or Druids in general actually, because Druids have so many different types of Taunts. Um, this is particularly good against them. One Flame Strike for a little bit of board removal. You've only got one in there, so you might want to look at possibly trying to get something else for board removal. Depends on what you're coming up against. If you're coming up against uh, a lot of uh, Rush, and zoo type decks then maybe you want to get either another one of these or maybe um, a blizzard or something instead uh, it's up to you and finally we have a Ragnaros the Fire Lord because well it's Ragnaros so why not unless your opponent has a, a really good way of countering it it can it can sometimes win the game more often than not I'd say so that's the deck that's the secret that's the rule the ladder mage secret tempo deck legend uh, <laughs> as I say it's a bit of a mouthful um, but it's been pretty effective so far since I've been playing it um, I mean it's it it's got legend in the title but uh, 
I, I don't know. Because I'm, I'm not at that point, so I can't tell you whether or not it's any good at legendary rank. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But uh, you should try it out, because I've been having a bit of fun with it. Um, if you do decide to play it, let me know how you get on. Uh, also, if you make any videos using this deck, feel free to link them to me uh, via my Twitter. And uh, I shall see you next time for some more Big Deck Player. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.